Are you a junior cybersecurity analyst working in a SOC and you're wondering where you can go after the SOC? Well, in today's video, I wanted to share with you the different paths that you can choose from. During your time in the SOC, you might have come across certain aspects that you enjoy more than the others. And this could be do you enjoy investigating or maybe do you enjoy threat hunting or incident response. And that can shed some light as to where you want to head to next. I'm going to share with you some of the popular choices that I've seen over my career when I was in the SOC. We'll start with number one, tier two. Tier two analyst is probably the more common path I see people take because they've been in the SOC for quite a while now, but they still don't know exactly what they want to do, but they want a promotion. So the next logical thing is tier two. When you're a tier two analyst, your responsibilities shift just a little bit. You do focus more on investigations for sure. You perform a lot more deep dive investigations and you answer client inquiries if they come in through the pipeline. Now, obviously this varies depending on your security operations center, but typically that is the case. You also will mentor junior analysts and update process documentation. Now I've seen some tier twos bear the responsibilities of actually tuning alerts that tier ones have escalated. So it is a good idea if you do plan to move on to a tier two type role to understand the alert logic so you can have better control in tuning that alert if it comes down to it. When it comes to hours for tier two analysts, you no longer work the 24 by seven shift. Instead, you're now a nine to five and you don't work weekends unless you're on call. Number two is tier three. In some rare cases, I've seen some tier one analysts jump straight into tier three and skip tier two. Now, this obviously depends on the organization itself. However, tier three analysts are typically more specialized. So you can think about it as incident response analysts, cyber threat intelligence, or maybe even threat hunting as well. Now, some may say that these tier three analysts are part of a SOC, not part of a SOC. It, again, it really depends. But typically, I would say they are still part of the SOC ecosystem. However, you typically don't deal with alerts or tickets that come in. Instead, you likely are working on tickets created by either the tier one or tier two analyst. In terms of hours, tier three analysts will work nine to five and have weekends off. Now, unless you're in incident response, then your hours are question marks. <laughs> Number three, professional services. Now this will apply if you are working for an MSSP. Professional services are those that are engineers and use case developers. So this could be implementing a new SIM for a client or even use case development for a client. And obviously there's many more, but those are just some of the examples. So if you're somebody who enjoys building out a SIM, installing it, configuring it, making sure it's up to date or engineering things and making sure they work, well, maybe professional services or an engineer is for you. In terms of hours, typically nine to five weekends are good. However, if something breaks, they might get a call. They might be on call and it's typical. Number four, GRC, governance, risk, and compliance. These analysts are in charge of ensuring that your clients or even your business are in compliance with regulatory requirements. So for example, if your organization wants to be SOC 2 compliant, a GRC analyst would know best. So if you enjoy writing rules, policies, and procedures, GRC could be for you. Now do keep in mind that GRC analysts do not need to be super, super technical. So if you are in the SOC and you kind of hate the technical aspect of it, again, GRC might be the play for you especially if you enjoy laws and regulations and making sure people following the rules. Number five, consulting. Consulting can be literally anything within that company, whatever role <laughs> exists. In my case, I was a vulnerability management consultant. So I would run vulnerability scans for clients. I would use something like Nessus, Tenable, and perform reports. And sometimes I would even actually make sure that those vulnerabilities are exploitable. So I got to exploit it and take a look. But in short, consultants are there to help clients Google things. <laughs> They're there to help clients find solutions and work with them 
to implement them. A typical interaction could be setting up a meeting with the client, gather some information, advise them on, on stuff, and if the client agrees to it, the consultant can then either A, implement whatever they are advising, or B, ask another department within the same company to help implement that for the client. Consulting might be for you if you enjoy Googling things for people and advising them on how to improve their cybersecurity posture and how they can reduce the overall risk of their company. Number six, TAM or Technical Account Manager. Most of the paths that I talked about, excluding GRC, are technical. For a TAM, you do need to have some technicality. I mean, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with GRC. You don't have to be super technical, but it is good if you have that technical uh, knowledge. Now, the main responsibility of a TAM is to be that liaison between your SOC and your client. So if the client has any information, they contact the TAM, the TAM relays that information to the SOC. They are the middle person to make sure things happen. They also perform a lot of touch points between the clients. So you can think about bi-weekly meetings, weekly meetings, or even monthly meetings or quarterly meetings. Really depends on the client. Do keep in mind that if you do go into the route of the TAM role, you do have to create a lot of PowerPoint presentations because you will be doing a lot of presentations during those meetings with the clients. This is the same for consulting as well. Now, if you hate creating PowerPoint presentations, maybe a TAM or a consulting is not the role for you. And there you have it. Those are the roles that you can take after being in a role of a junior cybersecurity analyst working in a SOC environment. To recap, you have your tier two analyst, tier three analyst. Now, of course, this only depends if your SOC works on a tiered approach. Otherwise, you might just be senior analyst. You also got professional services or GRC or consulting and TAM. There are many others, but those are the more popular ones that I've come across during my career in the SOC. If you've been working in a SOC for quite a while now and you want to move on to the next step, talk to your manager. They're generally very understanding and they want you to succeed. If you were an amazing tier one security analyst, Chances are, if you wanted to move to a different role, you would have the opportunity to interview with that department's hiring manager because you've been a rock star in a SOC. The sky is the limit for you when you are in a SOC. Don't think that because you're in a SOC, you have to stay in there. You have to stay technical because that's not true. Keep in mind that whoever you meet in the SOC will become your network outside. Be sure that you are kind, humble, and overall a nice person to get along with. That is it for the video. If you enjoyed it and found it informative, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.